idea is that uh, this hierarchy of power, master slave, repression of emotion, especially the emotion of anger and sexuality. So, so I want to talk about what happens when we grow up with rules like these. I've quoted Virginia Shapiro saying 96% of families are dysfunctional. People say, isn't that, you know, did you say that? No, I didn't say that. I think they're all dysfunctional to some degree. We're all, we all come out of the same set of rules. So how can we not be? And I don't care about formal logic. All the birds could be flying in the wrong direction. That's possible. That is possible. So, so we want to look at what happens when a child is abused. I want to read you something from David Muir. That abuse is not natural, he says. That it does not appear spontaneously without contact or instruction from others. This means, of course, that the person involved with abuse could have been taught other behavior. That there are options which have been denied that person, and because of the narrowness and the one-dimensional quality of the world of abuse, I will argue that abuse represents a loss of knowledge about oneself and of the world and a loss of freedom. You see, that is what I argued in the family series, that, that children are wounded because children don't know what normal is. How would you know what normal parenting is? All you know is what is told you as normal parenting. And then when the pain is so great, you move out of the pain because it's too hard to stay in yourself. When you're in that pain, and then you forget. And all children idealize their parents. You can't not do it. I couldn't have called a meeting and said, with my little bag back, Dad, you're an alcoholic, Mom, you're a co-alcoholic, I'm moving down the street. I couldn't do that. I had to idealize them and make them okay and me, me bad. That's what children do. So, so the abuse lasts a lifetime. That's what we're understanding. And because the, the defenses that we develop are so powerful, they become automatic and unconscious. And by the time you get to be an adult, you forget. You forget what happened. The, the most dramatic example of that is Cynthia. Where, you know, working with a woman in her 60s, she's suddenly starting to get the memory of her incest. That's not uncommon. So in the most extreme forms of abuse, sexual abuse, we know that people can forget for 50 years.